doers. This is our prayer in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen and amen. Devil is a liar. Good morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can you hear me? All right. Good morning, Second Baptist. Another day God has allowed us to see each other. We thank you, Reverend Kalu, and your family. And all those I'm seeing a couple people here that I haven't seen in a while, that I have not seen. And I'm just glad to see you back in the house of the Lord. Amen. Brother McKenzie, thank you for the visitors that you have brought. It's such a wonderful thing to bring somebody to church. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm not going to be with you long. And cause I know you're ready to get home and fire up your barbecue grill for tomorrow. Some of y'all going to do that today. I thank God that I'm off tomorrow from my, my educational, uh, from my being a teacher. Hopefully, y'all give Reverend Nelson a rest tomorrow. Amen. I love you. I just need a little family time. Amen. Thank God. I got a clap on that. Amen. All right. <laughs> Hallelujah. But if you brought your Bibles. Turn to Matthew 16, 24 through 26. Matthew 16, 24 through 26. I was so inspired by Reverend Blackman on last week who laid out about discipleship. Gave us the Great Commission, laid out the platform for making disciples, and now I'm going to tell the church to be like Nike and just do it. Matthew 16, 24 through 26. Once you have found it, please respond by saying amen. Amen. I'm going to read from the New International Version. And then Jesus said to his disciples, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves. Must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it. But whosoever loses their life for me will find it. What good will it be for someone to gain the whole world and yet forfeit their soul? Or what can anyone give in exchange for their soul? For the Son of Man is going to come to his Father's glory with his angels, and then he will reward each person. And then he will reward each person according to what they have done. Truly, I tell you, someone who are standing here will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. You may be seated. May God add a blessing to the reading and the hearers, but most of all the doers of his holy word. For a short moment in short time this morning, I'd like to speak from the subject of pick up your cross. Pick up your cross. Pick up your cross. Did the great theologian Diedrich Bonhoeffer, great German pastor, was 
known for a book called The Cost, the Cost of Discipleship. And in that, he has a quote that reads, when Christ calls a man, he bids him come and die. On the other side of theology, the great Dr. James Cone, a black theologian who teaches at Union Theological Seminary now for over 25 years. You might know his book. He wrote a book entitled Martin and Malcolm, another book entitled Black Power. He was the foremost authority of liberation theology. A new book he has out is called The Cross and the Lynching Tree. The Cross and the Lynching Tree. The cross and the lynching tree are the two emotional charged symbols in the history of African American community. In this work, James Cone explores these symbols and how they are connected. I don't remember, but many of you of this era do remember Billy Holiday. He said, strange fruit. Southern trees bear a strange fruit. Blood on the leaves and blood at the root. Black bodies swinging in the southern breeze. Strange fruit hanging from the poplar trees. Pastoral scenes of the gallant south. The bulging eyes and the twisted mouth. Scent of magnolia sweet and fresh and then the sudden smell of burning flesh here is fruit for the crows to pluck for the rain to gather for the wind to suck for the sun to rot for the trees to drop here is a strange and bitter crop. Your heart, just listening to that, brings up a gloomy past. And what Dr. Cohn is, is trying to convey to us is that after the Civil War, when slavery was over, the only way to be able to instill fear into our African-American community was by lynching. It was a spectacle. It says sometimes in attendance will be nearly over 5,000 people not coming to church, uh, not going to a ballpark to see baseball, but coming to see someone lynched on a tree. In fact, America needs to acknowledge this. I don't have the time this morning, but I could very well preach it. But in Matthew 16, 24, Jesus says, if anyone wishes to come after me, he must deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. Three imperatives for those who want to follow Jesus. And I like this particular scripture because it lays my three-point sermon right in the text. First, he must deny himself. Second, he must take up his cross. And lastly, he must follow me. Jesus gives three commands. Deny yourself, take up your cross, and follow me. However, the second one, he must take up his cross, is the contextual big idea of this theme. The number one command that Jesus is saying is that you got to take up your cross. It's amazing that Jesus would use this analogy of a cross 
For he's predicting his death and he knows that he's about to get up on a cross. And much like I was explaining of how the spectacle was of looking at black men from lynching trees, the, the Roman Empire at that time did the same thing. And that's why they hung them on the cross, that others might be able to see if they rebelled, what would happen to them. Jesus is saying, and you remember, as Jesus was walking, uh, he, even the cross got too heavy even for Jesus. The cross was heavy because Jesus prior to getting, walking with the cross, had already bared the pain, already bared suffering and spitting and humiliation and degradation. He had already experienced. But Jesus said, no cross, no crown. No cross, no crown. Amazing to me, this cotton candy theology nowadays that think that we can just receive crowns with no cross. We've taken the cross and laid it aside. You go to some churches, you can't even find a cross nowhere. But my Bible tells me that the Jesus died on a cross. The cross is the center of Christianity. Without the cross, there is no Christianity. Remember when I was growing up and I would watch folks and they would get their little chains and have a little pennant on there, have a cross. I never forget my pastor said, don't you ever get a cross with Jesus still there. Don't ever buy a cross when Jesus is still on the cross. Because the Jesus I serve is off the cross. The Jesus I serve was risen from the grave. I want no cross with a Jesus on it. No cross. No crown. When Jesus commanded his followers to take up the cross gave them an ultimate challenge to give up everything give up everything I said uh, no reserves no retreats no regrets Jesus said in Matthew 10 38 and he who does not take his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me Look at it for yourself. You got to have a cross. Well, Brother Preacher, are you talking that I need a wooden cross on my back? I've never had that experience. Well, no, I'm not talking about a wooden cross. But I'm talking about a spiritual cross. I'm talking about crosses in your life. Crosses of relationships. Crosses of an aching body. Crosses of alcohol abuse. Crosses of substance abuse. Crosses of relationships. What do you mean, brother pastor? Well, let me tell you something. Many of us can, 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 can acknowledge that we have problems. Uh, it makes me, sometimes I, I get weird when people go, I don't drink, I don't smoke, I don't do this, I don't do that, I don't do this, I don't do this, I don't do that. But the Bible says, all, all, all have come short, the glory of God. And, and, and you're going to have to Deny yourself sometimes. I know most of you in here got wings under your clothes. But, 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 but for those 50 of us that don't, we know about temptation. We know that we wanted to say yes, but we had to say no. You was right there 
about to say, yes, I'll hang out. But then some got on the inside. And you might look in the mirror and said, God, I'm not that old person. And please bring me back to you. So you've got to deny sometimes. Deny your temptation. And even deny some people. I remember when, when I was growing up, they said, friends don't treat me like they used to. Since I laid my burdens down, I don't do the things I used to do. I'm not going where I used to go. And because of result of that, I'm not popular anymore. They don't know me on the first name basis anymore. But I'm so glad that Jesus changed my name. I used to be the man. Now I serve the man. I feel like preaching, y'all. Jesus is saying, deny yourself. Uh, deny yourself. Sometimes say no to yourself. Say no to yourself. Deny yourself. The second aspect of taking up your cross is to, to, to pick up your cross. I'm just going to hang out there for a while. What does that mean? Picking up your cross. Picking up your cross means that you, if your cross is laying down, you're going to have to stoop down and get it. And, and, and I imagine as you begin to see Jesus walk with his own cross, that's how the experience will be for you. Because he said no cross no crown but with the cross you can't do it by yourself what do you mean i can't do it by myself i told you earlier that jesus was walking with his cross he was walking battered bruised and pale his limbs was getting a little weak he didn't know uh, what he could do, but then all of a sudden, a brother named Simon from Serene got up under the cross and helped lift the cross for him. That's why you need each other, because you can't walk this journey by yourself. I get so tired of people thinking they can do it by themselves. We need each other. We need each other. I am because we are. And because we are, therefore I am. And so uh, when my cross get heavy, I say, oh, baby, can you help me with my cross? And she gets up under and bears the cross. When you feel like you're weak, pick up your cross. Because there's assurance that Jesus will send somebody your way to help you bear the cross. If he sent it for Jesus, certainly he will send it for me. I don't know how you feel about him, but once you deny yourself, and then after you deny yourself, after you deny yourself, now pick up your cross. How many in here are willing to pick up your cross? How many in here are willing to pick up your cross? How many in here are willing to pick up your cross? Now the shouts are about to stop because picking up your cross means to be obedient. No one gonna get a lot of shouts there. <laughs> but God, 
But Jesus obeyed God. He obeyed his father who sent him. Well, I've got to hurry on now. But I want you to know that we've got to deny ourselves. Take up our cross and then follow and then follow and then follow not just anybody not just anything I'm not just following anybody that's what gets us in trouble when we start following people instead of God you got to follow Christ and if you follow Christ the Bible says he will reward you on yesterday at Sister Ruth's song's home going I told him they can't have no crown wearing unless there's been some cross bearing see you got to pick up your cross whoa I feel like preaching now because you see I once was lost but now I'm found I once was blind but now I see how many of you once were lost once were lost lost with others lost out in the world lost for the sake of being lost but then Jesus but then Jesus Jesus, but then Jesus, but then Jesus, he found you. That's why it said, if you're willing to lose your life, then you're willing to gain the world. But you got to lose yourself in order to gain no pain, no gain, no pain, no gain. Not just for your muscles, but for your faith. Not just for exercise, but to exercise with the Lord. I'm ready to exercise because I know who holds tomorrow. I'm so glad that I denied myself. And I'm so glad that I took up my cross. But most of all, I'm glad that I follow Jesus. I'm glad that I follow Jesus. Oh, brothers and sisters, this morning, can you pick up your cross? Can you pick up your cross? Will you pick up your cross? And then, and then, if you get a little weak, I'll be there. I'll be there. Hallelujah. Oh, I got to hurry on now. But I know on a hill far away stood an old, an old, an old rugged cross. The emblem of sufferings and shame. And I love that old rugged cross. If that didn't get you, maybe you know this one. <laughs> If you can't stand a little disappointment, if you can't stand being talked about, if you can't stand always being down, let me remind you, no cross, no crown, no cross, no crown. If you can't stand being lied about, if you can't stand heartaches, if you can't turn a frown into a smile, no cross, no crown must Jesus bear must Jesus bear must Jesus bear the cross alone and the world and go free I don't know how you feel about him but I I'm so glad today that I met Jesus along the way. Oh, watch this now. I'm so glad that I picked up my cross. I'm so glad that I start following him. But if you never 
pick up a cross. I'm so glad that if I just get near the cross, 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 Near the cross, a trembling soul, love and mercy found me. Near the cross, near the cross, near the cross, I'll watch, I'll wait, hoping and trusting till I see my Savior's face. Near the cross, near the cross, near the cross. I just want to get near, near the cross. How many of you are willing to pick up your cross? How many of you are willing to pick up your cross and then follow Jesus? Pick up your cross. Pick up your cross. All of us in this room have a cross. But you got to be willing to pick it up. Not only pick it up, but you got to be willing to carry somebody else's cross. You got to be willing to deny yourself, deny others. Don't care who they are, if they're not in sync with your destiny, you got to cut them off. I had to say bye, baby. I'll see you later. For I'd rather be with Jesus. The one that loved me. The one that knows the number of hairs on my head. The one that knew me before I knew myself. I got to let you go. Deny yourself. Pick up your cross. And follow me. We extend the invitation to you now. Come on and sing it if you know it. Yeah, yeah. 